Welcome and join me in, to in search for wellness. As I start this activity of creating and developing a herbal soup. And soups can actually be a part and parcel of our meal every day. Soups, I have realized, are very good preparations because one, they are not heavy in the stomach in the morning and late in the evening. They are not heavy in the stomach. Today we are going to create a herbal soup. This is a chicken herbal soup. Here we have a cubed uh, part of a chicken. Uh, cubed parts of a chicken, about uh, half a kg. Here we have about four medium-sized uh, cubed tomatoes. Here we have uh, red and green capsicum. Here you have onion for frying the chicken. Here we have uh, chopped uh, okra. Here we have cubed uh, onions. I will add these together with the capsicum. So I'll add them later. This uh, solution, this is a, is a ginger solution. I have uh, grated the ginger very fine and then squeezed out water out of it because ginger is very fibrous and many people don't want to feel that taste of fibrous, anything fibrous like ginger in the mouth so that you can use only the fluids from the ginger. This is grated, um, this is grated uh, garlic, four cloves of garlic. This is uh, finely chopped uh, leeks. Uh, here we have um, here we have salt, and here we have um, half teaspoon of turmeric powder. The yellow one is turmeric powder, and cinnamon. The brown one is cinnamon. Half teaspoon of uh, cinnamon. In this brown enameled uh, pot, I have put um, olive oil. It's already very hot, so I'm just going to put the uh, onions for frying my chicken in there that's about um, a medium sized onion we are going to leave it to cook for a while to cook for a while uh, like I have said uh, many times uh, these days we may not allow our onions to brown. There are many recipes these days that people still make with a lot of brown onions, but we have been greatly advised not to allow the onions to brown. So we are just allow it to cook in the oil, to salt in the oil, and then we will add our chicken so that we can cook our chicken first and allow it to fry to fly and cook fast. Let's look at um, our new onion is ready. It is uh, almost browning. We don't want it to brown. So I'll just add my chicken. I'll just add my chicken. Obviously, Chicken provides us with a good protein. This is chicken that has been, uh, I have removed the skin of the chicken because the chicken, the skin of the chicken carries most of the fat in the chicken. And so I have removed, I have removed the, the skin to minimize the amount of uh, animal fat that may be in the chicken. And we are, Allow it, we are going to allow it to cook on its own until it is ready so that we can add our herbs and allow them to cook continuously until we are satisfied. Our chicken is starting off well. My chicken is starting off well, 
So you are allow it to cook it in its water until it is dried up so that it can release for us its good and special flavor and also to ensure that the chicken is properly cooked. I am cooking my my chicken with medium medium frame on this burner. This is quite a big burner and uh, the medium provides quite a lot of heat because meat and chicken should be cooked at high heat. It should be cooked at high heat to ensure that we kill all the microorganisms that may be resident in the chicken or in the meat due to, because of hardening processes. Because of any hardening processes. And there are also microorganisms, obviously, that reside within this uh, with this animal so meat needs to be cooked at very high temperature and it should not be tasted until it is well cooked to avoid uh, contaminating oneself with these microbes so you can see the water has a uh, subsided, most of this its water has subsided, you allow it uh, to cook a bit uh, in, that, um, in that status and then we can add our herbs and French beans. As I have introduced, you have seen uh, the kind of herbs children can be able to throw it, uh, uh, these, these herbs the spices like turmeric and cinnamon and uh, why a herbal soup one may ask why a herbal soup we are now going to add when i going to add the herb sweet we are going to add the herb sweet so that it can continue cooking more with the herbs and uh, developing the flavors of all the herbs together. The soup, I have found it very, very, very helpful because it's a way of delivering nutrients to the cells. And all these items that you are going to use like ginger, like uh, coriander, like celery, like okra, like garlic, leeks, capsicums, onions, tomatoes, turmeric and cinnamon. The ingredients, the, the, these, these uh, food items, these food items have got within their structure good molecules or good chemicals or good substances that are very helpful in our bodies. They do not necessarily fall in the category of carbohydrates, uh, minerals and uh, vitamins, or even proteins and fats, but they fall in the class of phytochemicals. These are phytochemicals or plant chemicals that they have been found and established to be very, very helpful. Our chicken now is at a point where now we can add our herbs. We are going to add our herbs and uh, our vegetable herbs and so that they can continue sautering, cooking uh, slowly, slowly with the chicken. Here we will add the finely grated, uh, the finely chopped uh, um, French beans. I've had the French beans because I like my soups to also have a feel of vegetables. So the French beans will cook together with our spices, with the herbs, that is celery. We have added the celery. We will add our okra. This is okra. You can see already the okra has stuck together because of uh, some water in it. 
you also add the dania and we also add our legs at this point so you can see We also add our salt to facilitate the water production from the, this uh, product and we will leave, we will now leave our mixture to cook together and to blend together with the chicken so that they can develop a very very special flavors. So we are allow these ones to cook together. So that uh, we can add uh, the tomatoes later. Yeah, we have said that uh, some of the special chemicals in the herbs and the spices have been found to penetrate into the brain better. And so, regular consum consumptions of herbs and spices that are also tolerant to the to the stomach has an overall effect with time to improve the general health they may not cause anybody to put on weight but their consumption is very very helpful their consumption is very very helpful if they can be incorporated in our diet consistently I have also come to learn that they are very, very beneficial. And I have found this soup, we make this soup about three times in a week. And this is soup I'm making for my family for about six, they are, we are six people. To be taken, to be used and to be taken as an appetizer. An, an appetizer be, before one takes the supper. It is very light. The soup is very light and it will not hinder a person from taking the amount, the amount of supper. Yeah. You can see how our hearts are responding to the heat. They are cooking well. We will allow them to cook in this mixture before adding the water before we add the water or any of the other ingredients the tomatoes the other ingredients that we are going to add is the tomatoes is the tomatoes with the solution from the garlic but we are going to allow these fibers some of these things at times are quite fibrous like leeks we find it is uh, it's quite fibrous and so at times it's good, leeks, um, celery can also be quite fibrous. And when the, the soup is ready and one is taking the soup, one wants to take a smooth soup, a smooth soup, with all the ingredients well cooked. Uh, the pot is uh, very dry at the bottom. We don't want uh, these ingredients to burn. And so at this point, I'm going to add the tomatoes. The tomatoes, the red, the red coloration or the red pigment of the tomatoes is called um, lycopene. And lycopene is better used when it is cooked, especially in tomato sauces. Tomato sauces are very, also very good with lycopene and lycopene is more usable usable when it is um, when it is cooked and lycopene has been said to be very good to prevent uh, the problems with the prostate another very good item that is good for the prostate is the pumpkins and the seeds of the pumpkins, which have got zinc. The seeds of the pumpkin also has zinc, and it is good to preserve 
the seeds of the pumpkin as one cooks the uh, prepares the pumpkin dry them like i have shown in the video uh, for how you can wash the pumpkins and dry the seeds and grind them with the mortar which is usually the breader i'm going to add i'm going to add the fluid from the ginger so that it can also facilitate um, the tomatoes to cook we want the tomatoes to be cooked completely to be smooth and completely to give us the, the red coloration and also to improve the coloring and the texture of our soup and make all other ingredients available yeah you can see that uh, our mixture is very beautiful with all the greens and the red of the tomato and uh, we allow it to cook a bit we allow it to cook at this time so that uh, the herbs may be cooked and our tomatoes and our tomatoes may be cooked so that by the time we add the rest of the ingredients the tomatoes will have been smoothened will have been smoothened so that they can give us of their colors we have given the tomatoes a head start and at this point we can add the rest of the ingredients so that uh, they can all we can bread these cara these uh, flavors we can bread we can bread the flavors before we add any of the fruits we are going to add the capsicums at this point uh, the rest of the onions I like a lot of onions onions should be eaten like vegetables because they have got very good things substances within them this is garlic you add it at this point we will also add our spices at this point at this point we have added everything that we may need to add and uh, so that we can uh, leave the content look at uh, the substance mm -hmm. there is a lot of substance we have created and added quite a foundation of substance of herbal products in this pot and in this recipe which when they cook together they blend the flavors together and by the end when we take uh, our soup even if it's a small amount of an appetizer soup it doesn't feel the stomach when you eat take an appetizer soup it doesn't feel the stomach because you take from a small bowl but it introduces all very special uh, plant chemicals into the body, into the cells. It makes uh, the plant chemicals available into the cells. And uh, that is the foundation that we have created. So we allow them to cook together. We allow them to cook together. We add some amount of water so that we can now from now on facilitate the cooking of this soup yeah we're just going to add a little bit of water just a little bit of water to facilitate the cooking of these ingredients when you add water the water facilitates in the cooking because the heat is able to reach each and every item item in your pot so we will really leave it to simmer and keep checking when you are satisfied that it is ready that the our herbs are well cooked then we will be able to add to develop the texture because the way we have if we add amount of water amount of water to create enough fluid to create enough fluid it means that that soup will be watery 
and all these beautiful ingredients, we will all settle to the bottom. But when we develop the texture of the matrix, it means that these items are suspended within the body of the soup and they don't keep settling to the bottom. Oh, you can see how our mixture is coming out very well. All the tomatoes have dissolved up. They have been broken down completely. And uh, what is remaining is the capsicums and the chicken. And uh, you just give it uh, some more time. You just give it some little more time for the capsicum to cook a little bit so that it is a bit softer. It's not too hard. We don't want it to be too hard when somebody is taking the soup. I don't want the capsicums to be too hard. When we are one is taking the soup, I'll just add a little bit more water to facilitate uh, the cooking process and also avoid avoid it, uh, the mixture my comb my ingredients from getting stuck to the bottom of a pot of the of the pot i'm happy with what i can see and i know this soup will be very very flavorful very 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 flavorful it is a very delicious soup it will be a very delicious soup Like I said, this soup is, is mild. It's not harsh on the stomach. It is actually especially very good for the system. I have not put any of the hot spices like curry powder. I have not uh, put uh, chili. I have just uh, used the uh, normal herbs that we use daily in our foods. And it is very, very mild. At this point, I want to start developing the texture by adding our chloride, so I'll add a little bit more water. I'll add more water. And just uh, scoop my chloride to develop the texture. We just uh, measure out so that I know the consistency that uh, I have developed the texture with. So my chloride is full in the pot, in this other smaller brown pot, and I may not necessarily use all of it, but I'll just measure out. Like now I have measured out a bowl of the chloride, of the chloride from the brown rice that has been milled with the help of a blender. And you can see it Im immediately changes the texture. It immediately changes the texture of my soup. When you have created, added enough content as uh, for the foundation of your soup, it means that you can add enough water, enough water to develop the soup, which is enough for the number of people that you are making for. So the amount of content that you used also depends on how many people, on how many people that you take that soup. So we will still add a little bit more water and add maybe another bowl of the colloidal soap, of the colloidal content, and then we see how it goes. We don't want to dilute it too much or make it uh, too thin, but we just develop it in such a manner that is enough for the people for whom it is being made for. And we said that 
these uh, beautiful ingredients, chemicals in the spices and the herbs, they, they are only required in very, very minimal amounts. Very, very minimal amounts. You add another bowl of uh, colloid. This colloid helps carry the ingredients. It helps carry the ingredients, help develop the texture of my soup, depending on what, uh, whether I want it too thick or too light. So the colloid is mainly to help develop and ensure that the ingredients in the soup are suspended within the body of the soup and they do not settle to the bottom. We will leave the soup to boil a little bit more so that you can now develop, we can develop that, that texture. Uh, you can see my soup is uh, on its way to get ready. You can see it has developed a very good consistency. If I had not added or created the choroidal mixture, the choroid from the brown rice with complex carbohydrates, I would just add water and that is what my soup would just be. It would just be herbs and vegetables in water, in water. But the idea is to improve that texture, that it is not just watery, but it has got some thickness and texture to it, to the eyes, and also to the tongue as you, con as you eat it, you enjoy, you enjoy your soup. You can see that it is like, this is a good consistency. This is a good consistency for an appetizer soup. And like I said, you serve in a small bowl. You serve in a small bowl, so it does not affect the amount of food that you want to eat, but it introduces good plant chemicals that may not be well concentrated in the meal that one makes for supper. So this kind of soup delivers to the cells and to the body that kind of soup, that, those kind of ingredients, those kind of uh, uh, plant chemicals that are very, very helpful for every part of the body. We know that we have learned that some of these special chemicals in our foods, they are, can readily be obtained when some of the plants, uh, vegetables, herbs, when they are eaten raw and also fruits, but they can also be cooked. They are not everybody is able to tolerate raw foods. And so most of those uh, chemical, food chemicals are still obtainable and easily accessible to the cells when the food item has been cooked. You can see the consistency is superb. The consistency is just superb. I have added about uh, two and a half bowls of my choroidal of my choroid to develop this consistency and again this amount is good and enough for for my family of six members my soup is now ready i've just tasted it and i realized the everything is well and balanced and so I'll just switch off, switch off the banner. We just switch off the banner. And the food and the soup is now ready for serving. Um, there are many communities in the world that make soups as a culture. They make soups as a culture. We know that the, the European communities and the Americas 
they have this thing about the appetizer soup and every time when you go into these countries or even in big hotels where they frequent you remember that you'll be served with an appetizer soup the chinese also are very special they have got their own special soups with chinese vegetables and also noodles and rice and this is a a good process this is a good process and a good part of a meal to incorporate regularly in one's dishes in one's meals arrangement for a meal per week maybe three times a week because like we have seen it carries special you can add special uh, ingredients and process it in a manner that more of the good uh, plant chemicals will be available to the cells that would be incorporated in the main meal. Now I have switched off the banners and my soup is ready. I thank you uh, for <laughs> giving me the company to make such beautiful meal i just have come to love soups because i don't like to eat to feel so puffed up by the food in my system and i find this soup very 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 helpful they say that ginger helps in the uh, ginger helps in the increasing the metabolism and in fact in the morning after you eat in the evening this soup in the evening you find yourself quite agile the following morning and i would encourage you and i invite you uh, to try it and uh, if possible to try and make it a uh, frequently you can also improve on it uh, using various ingredients for those who want their soup to be a little bit hot with more curry with more masaras and chilies they can one can go ahead and add more. This particular one, I just wanted it to be a little bit mild, not too hot with the hot chilies. We are now going to serve this soup so that you can see it at close quarters, how it has come out. I've served my soup. This is a small, it's a small bowl. A small bowl, this is not even enough for soup for the morning, but this is just enough for, for an appetizer soup. And the amount that I have served, three quarters of this bowl, is enough to take before one's meal. We have found many times in the market, we have found uh, packages, packages that are written soups. And most of those packages, they are, the, the main powder is cornstarch. It's cornstarch with a few things added to it. But one doesn't need to buy those packets. All you need is to create your own wholesome soup in the, in the home. And you'll find a soup like this one is also very comfortable with the children. Very comfortable with the children. And they surely will love to eat of this soup. So this is a special spoon. This rounded spoon is a special uh, soup spoon for eating one soup. It's very good for eating one soup uh, because it just uh, allows the soup to just flow in the mouth. You just put it that way and allow the, f the soup to flow right into one mouth. You can see how beautiful and what nice textured is our soup. All the ingredients that we have added has become part of the texture and the flavors of this soup. This soup is surely delicious. There are some people who like taking their soups with, a, with some toast or with a, some, a small bun 
or even with chapati you might find that uh, some people may just in the family may just prefer to eat their appetizer soup with a chapati with a chapati especially if it is a brown whole home your chapati it is okay especially for the evening so that one does not necessarily consume a lot of food and a lot of starchy food as one goes to bed in the evening that is our soup and again i invite you and welcome you to to try it in your kitchen add your own ingredients and the flavors that you like and uh, please uh, you can tell us in the comments area how you have achieved yours thank you very 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 much for participating with me and uh, also visiting this channel and continuously showing your interest in this uh, in this channel and the content that is being developed for you in this channel thank you so much and welcome